Hi, this is Teal from Parkablocks.com. Welcome to another monitor review. This behind me is the Dell UP3017 monitor. I searched online for reviews for this monitor and there are not a lot. So I asked Dell Singapore whether they have a unit that I can borrow for review purposes and they do have one and they have sent me one last month so I've been using this for more than a month. In this video, I'm going to talk about my experiences with it. I guess you can say that this is a sponsored review but I am not paid any money to do this. I just want to create this review for people who want to look for a white color gamut monitor for work purposes such as photo and video editing, graphic design or for digital art. The cables that are included are these three. This is the mini display port to display port cable. The small end goes to the computer. This is a USB 3 cable. This part goes to the monitor. And this is the power cable. So depending on where you buy the monitor, they are going to uh, ship a power cable with the appropriate head. These are the ports available on the monitor. We have two HDMI ports. This is a full size display port in. This is a mini display port in. This is a full size display port out. An audio jack two upstream USB 3 ports and two downstream USB 3 ports. And there are two USB 3 ports on the side of the monitor. So that's a total of four USB 3 ports, two behind and two on the side. At the bottom right side of the monitor, we have the power button and all the small manual buttons. These are actually physical buttons uh, that you can press and they give a very tactile feel when pressed. The vessel mount that it uses is 100mm. This is a 30 inch monitor and it's larger compared to the current monitor that I'm using, the very old Dell U2711. Not just larger, it has more pixels as well. The resolution that it supports is 2560 by 1006. This monitor, the aspect ratio is 16 by 10. Now my monitor, the aspect ratio is 16 by 9 and supports a resolution of 2560 by 1440. So this monitor has extra 160 vertical pixels. So what that means is it has extra working space, extra desktop space uh, to work with. The bezel is smaller but not as small compared to the Infinity H monitors like the UP2716D. I'm not sure whether I like the thinner or thicker bezel but I'm fine with this. And this monitor it is not glossy so it doesn't reflect light. It has an anti-glare filter applied over it and I think it works quite well. Color reproduction is very good. Dell says that it supports up to 100% ODB RGB. I have already calibrated my monitor with the Spider 5 Pro calibrator and the readout that I got was 97% ODB RGB. So when it comes to color reproduction, I think this monitor is um, very good right up there. When I received this monitor, my initial reaction after setting it up was this is a beautiful monitor. But as I worked with it, I found out that there are some color cast issues. For example, when working against white background, sometimes I do need to work against white background for page layout. This is Photoshop that is showing me a white background. So I detected some very light blue in this area here and some very light pink or magenta in this area. So it transitions from light blue to white and then to light pink. My camera is not able to capture it on video, but it is there. It's very subtle and it only appears when working against white background because there are no colors and there should not be any color when I'm looking against a white background. Let me show you a photograph that I have enhanced to let you see what I'm talking about. So this is a photograph that I've taken and enhanced the saturation so it brings out the additional colors that are on the screen. So here we have some light blue and this whole area is supposed to be white and then it trans transitions to light pink or magenta here. So um, this is the color cast that I'm talking about. Although in real life, you are probably not going to see this unless you work on white background. 
Now Dell monitor, at least for this particular model, it has this feature called uniformity compensation. So what it does is it will sort of uh, make the panel a bit uniform. And after I switch it on, by the way, that feature is hidden here in the menu settings here. So it says here, uh, uniformity compensation. And after you switch it on, it will say it's calibrated. And let me show you another photo of what it looks like when this monitor is calibrated. And after calibration, it seems that the color cast is gone on both sides, but it's replaced by alternating uh, light blue, light pink stripes that goes across the screen. So here you can see some lines, some very vague uh, pattern going on. We see this light pink here light pink here, light blue, and this light pink here. So again, um, it's not very obvious unless you have an eye to spot it. So right now, this screen is in the calibrated mode. So I can see some very faint, very, very faint lines, uh, areas that are going across alternating. So that's something to take note of. I'm not sure if this issue uh, affects other monitors, but at least this is what I can see here. So why would you want to have a monitor that is capable of Adobe RGB versus sRGB? The main reason is for the higher color gamut. So with sRGB, you can see a lot of colors, but sRGB is actually most of it is actually within Adobe RGB, so Adobe RGB will be able to give you more colors and the main thing for me is as a person who works with print, the CMYK color gamma is within Adobe RGB but it's slightly outside of sRGB. So with this monitor, I can see all the colors that I want. I can compare it to my printed proofs. So whenever I work with a monitor like this in the office, like I would scan a image then i will compare my image on the screen and by the time it's on the screen it should appear exactly the way it should when i print it out so what i see on the screen should be matching what my print out and that is the advantage of this monitor it will be able to give more colors uh, similar colors compared to the printout now for videographers or photo editing purposes, um, having such a wide color gamut screen is also an advantage because when you have more colors, you can actually um, work your way down when you export your videos, when you export the photographs into other uh, color spaces which are smaller. But when you're working with sRGB, which is a smaller color space, you cannot work yourself uh, out. So that is the advantage of Adobe RGB versus sRGB. Now I'm going to open a file to show you the extra pixels provided by this monitor. So this resolution is 2560 by 1006 and compared to other 16 by 9 inch monitor, those 1440p monitors, we have this extra area here. So it's about 10% more working space, which is great. So this monitor is great for page layout. I mean, the screen is huge. You can fit almost three A4 size. This is A4, so you can fit one of this, two of this, and I think three. Yep, you can fit three A4 at 100%. So if you are doing magazine layout, you can actually look at your magazine pages at 100% without scaling. So this is very helpful if you want to check for the font sizes to make sure that they are legible. And with this screen, you can do so. Also, with the resolution on a 30 inch screen, everything appears to be large. So the buttons are large, the menus are large. Compared to a 4K screen, um, all this user interface, they are going to be a bit smaller. So if I were to choose between uh, 4K versus this resolution, I would want to buy a 4K screen if it's only larger than a 30 inch. So this is page layout, which is good on this type of monitor. 
So right now, if I'm looking at this screen, it's a bit difficult to detect the color cast because there are a lot of things going on. Let me switch over to Adobe Lightroom. So this is Lightroom and the extra uh, working space uh, is very welcome. So let me open up the file. This is the aspect ratio for this is three by two. So you can fill up the whole screen, leaving some bars, black bars on the left and right side. And it's great for video editing as well. Um, this is Final Cut Pro 10. And yes, um, lots of space to work with. Let me show you how videos will look like when played on this monitor. This is a trailer for Suicide Squad. Well, this is a wide aspect ratio movie, so there are black bars at the top and bottom. If you play videos that are recorded using DSLR cameras like those 16x9 aspect ratio cameras, then it's going to look something like this. There are still black bars at the top and bottom, but much smaller. And lastly, if you play games, well, this monitor should be able to handle games quite well at 60 frames per second. I'm not too sure about PC gaming, um, which can go up to higher frame rates, but for console gaming, it's definitely not going to be a big problem. I'm not sure if consoles, they are able to fill up the black bars, but on PC, with PC games, you can definitely uh, go full screen without those bars. So what about the backlight and IPS glow? Well, this is an IPS panel, so there is going to be IPS glow around the edges. It's unavoidable. But when watching movies at night, I see that it's not that big of a problem. Let me show you a screenshot where the screen is totally black. So this is a screenshot of the movie when I play this at night and there are some glow here at edges where the black bars are and this is a photo of the screen when it's totally black so I'm not sure if my camera can capture it right now but there are some um, glowing effect at the corners I think I have pretty much covered all the things I want to say. If there are any updates, I'll post that in my text review. The link will be in the video description. Now just to recap, this is a very nice 30 inch monitor with a resolution of 2560 by 1006. Color reproduction is good. The only issue I faced um, was the color cast issue. So after switching on uniformity compensation, it works a bit better. But this is something to take note of if you are someone who needs to work against a white background like if you do page design. So that could be an issue. But other than that, I think the monitor it performs quite well. One thing that I forgot to mention earlier is this monitor has full adjustability for the height, tilt and swivel. And overall for the past one month that I have used this monitor, I really enjoy using this. The last thing I want to talk about is the pricing of this monitor. The price is going to differ depending on where you buy it. Of course, this is currently selling at US $1,000 on Amazon.com. When I compare this to the Dell UP2716D, that smaller monitor is 400 US dollars cheaper so it really depends on how much you value the extra uh, physical space and the extra resolution but the price difference is quite significant and if you compare this monitor to the larger Dell UP3216Q the main difference is uh, that is a 4K monitor but the price difference is again quite significant. It's around 300 to 400 US dollars difference. So um, again, depending on which, uh, what qualities you value in a monitor, you can get the medium size monitor or the 27 or the 32 inch monitor. Now it's a bit strange here in Singapore when it comes to pricing because this monitor, it costs two times that of the 27 inch monitor. So to me, it doesn't really make 
make a lot of uh, economic sense to buy this larger monitor when it costs two times more but the amount of pixel it offers is only like 10 percent more i mean three inch of extra space is nice but 27 inch monitor to me is also quite big so i'm personally not going to spend two times the amount of money to buy this monitor however if i compare this monitor to the 32 inch 4k monitor the price difference is down to 160 singapore dollars which is around us 100 dollars thereabouts plus plus so again it doesn't make sense for me to buy this monitor at that price when i can just pay an extra hundred or two to get a 4k monitor to get a larger monitor with 4k resolution so um, that's the strange thing here with the pricing uh, from singapore dell that's all for my review today if you have any questions feel free to post them in the comment section below if there are any updates to uh, what i think and feel about this monitor i will post them in the text review the link is in the video description i hope this review is helpful see you in the next video bye